What's up YouTube? It's me Justin. I'm an opera singer. Today's video was picked by one of the 100k giveaway winners. Congratulations to Antal. This is a performance analysis of Snarky Puppy featuring Layla Hathaway performing something. Let's go. <laughs>
Pause, pause, pause. Okay, what the heck? I, um, okay, first thing I have to say is I don't know who Snarky Puppy is. And I'm sorry, I have to say it. I just have to be honest. I don't know who they are. So I did like a quick 60 second look on them and they've won like five Grammys, um, a very accomplished band. And from what I'm seeing, what I have read about them, I don't think everyone that's performing on stage instrumentally is part of Snarky Puppy. I think there's only like four or five members and maybe they just contracted other instrumentalists to help with this production. So if you have any knowledge on that, let me know down below. On the other hand, Layla Hathaway, I know very well. If you do not know Layla Hathaway, go listen to her album, Self Portrait. Oh, it's so good. My favorite song from that album is That Was Then. Oh, that song is so good. How I'm going to break this down without the sheet music Ooh. So the first thing I want to talk about is instrumentation. And I want to specifically talk about layering and how important that is in terms of dynamics and building up to wherever the song is going to go. So at the very beginning of the song, we essentially get our first layer, which is introduced by the keyboards. He plays at the very beginning and you get that as your bass layer. He plays for a while before the soloist, Miss Hathaway, comes in. But what was interesting is there's like a small sub layer. And I just say sub layer because the drummer hit, I believe his hi-hat, four times, but then just stopped. But also just added this very subtle, just very faint layer on top of the keyboardist who has established the tone so far. <laughs> I, I took notice of. They were so faint. And then hearing him come in later, I thought was a nice touch and just gave a little bit more texture to the very beginning first layer. Then the second layer was the, I believe the guitar. It was the that sliding back and forth between two notes. And I'm sure of one thing how I long to be around when when you can see the you and I have something in common we really hear the drum come in and he has a much more prominent role in where this song is going by establishing a really nice beat. On top of his layer, we get more guitar adding to that sliding back and forth, and you see the camera really honing in on the three string players. All of that to say, we're still not at a crazy high in terms of climax of the song. In terms of just instrumentation, we've come a little bit of ways from where we started and where we are now gives a lot of room to grow in terms of dynamics, in terms of crescendos, in terms of climaxing, in terms of cooling down from that climax. There's so much potential for where this can all go. And I really, really enjoy the gradualness of this movement considering how long the song is. Let's talk about Miss Hathaway. Miss Hathaway is so dang good. Her lower register, it's just one of those tones that puts goosebumps down your spine. It's just so dang good. What is phenomenal about what I'm listening to right now is the rawness of it all. I don't hear any auto-tune. I don't hear you know, the this idea of what we hear on radio with a bunch of post-production. It just sounds very raw and it sounds like 
a live take. And that is really nice to hear as a singer, as an analyst, especially trying to pay attention to technique. The very beginning of the song, what we've heard so far is intimidating in terms of coming in as a singer. You've got bare minimum happening instrumentally, and then it's just, boom, your time to sing. flaws or faults within your vocal technique, anything you did not want to happen and it happens there, it is going to stick out like a sore thumb. And that is because you don't have the comfort of a lot of composition going on underneath you in order to kind of maybe hide away some of the flaws that you have vocally going on. No room for that. I want to pinpoint specifically two parts that show the dynamic of Miss Hathaway's range. So if you don't know, she is known for her lower register. So at the very beginning of the song, Miss Hathaway opens up on a hum, on an mmm, and she starts off that hum really low, on a low F3. Then she dips down even more to an E flat three, jumps up to an A flat three, and then goes back down to the first note she sang, F three, and then goes back down to D E flat three before resolving to F three. So later on in the song, she sings the word revelation and that word hits a B flat four. And she adds a nice amount of chest voice to that note. How I long to be around when, when you can see the you and I have something in common. It's been a revelation, yeah, yeah. Hearing the difference between her lowest note from the very beginning jumping all the way up later on in the song to a nice B flat four. That is extremely impressive considering where we were at the very beginning to where we are now. Second thing we must address is this crazy run she did towards the beginning-ish of this piece where she went up to one of the higher notes that we've heard so far and then in that same exact riff went all the way down back to that low f3 that we were talking about before my god <laughs> this crazy riff happens on the line where my heart will run to and the riff happens on the word two two so that first note starts on an f4 and the highest note we hear of that riff is a c5 two this note and then she travels all the way down whatever the heck she does listen i do opera i don't do all of this stuff but she eventually lands down to an f3 that same low note we were talking about before and there is not one question no no where my heart will run to that is not easy because two, you are definitely switching between one of your breaks. It should all be very smooth. And she has so much practice with this and it comes so innately to her that it you don't even hear a break or a struggle between one register and the next. That is the goal. There's another 
riff that she does just after the one we just talked about where she goes even lower than this low F3 that we have been talking about before. In this new riff, she jumps down to a D flat, D flat three. It's just this theme within her riffs that I'm going to be talking about this whole video is the intervallic distance between the lowest note and the highest note and then how she's able to transition between all of those. So this next riff, she dips down low to a D flat three. That's the lowest note I believe we've heard so far. And then in that same riff, jumps up to that B flat four that we discussed earlier in the first riff. Now, she's extended the interval between the very lowest note and the very highest note, meaning the distance between those two is the largest we've talked about so far. Thinking about the relationship between each note and each vowel and how to bring about the most harmony between those two. And in order to do that, it's really great to find the harmony between certain vowels. Setup. I like this music video, whatever you want to call this. I like how it just seemed like a, it, just a natural recording session. I'm curious to know, everyone who was a part of that recording, there were some people just sitting and enjoying the performance. How did y'all get in there? And can like 
anyone <laughs> sign up for that because I would love to be just I would love to even just be a fly on the wall in in that atmosphere that would be incredible okay so um that last part I don't know what the heck was happening with the the modification of her voice but I don't know if someone hit something that activated something for her voice to be able to do that I have no idea but I was tripping out and then when I saw the drummer like tripping out like me it, it just seemed like okay that clearly was not part of the original plan based off of those reactions that was that was really wild if anyone knows what the heck was happening um maybe some engineering people music engineering people producers whatever please let me know i'm just very curious then the other thing i want to talk about is this idea of improv now again i'm sorry but i have no idea if this is a cover if this was something they collabed on i do not know this song now i'm very curious i believe the latter end where there was just a bunch of scatting i believe that was all improv maybe some of it wasn't maybe a good majority of it was i don't know but it sounds improv knowing leila hathaway and her respectable career and all that she has accomplished and what she's known for i would assume most of this is improv which to me is just absolutely wild it's that is honestly so wild one of the things i have just a ton of respect for and so many questions for are people who can scat and who can improv or people who can just hear something and be able to play it that to me is just i just i will never understand i will always just be awestricken by those types of people. Big thank you to the 100k giveaway winner for introducing me to a new band, Snarky Puppy, and also for allowing the opportunity to have Snarky Puppy and Leila Hathaway as new features on my channel. Whatever they wanted to accomplish in this performance, they knocked it out of the ballpark. If you liked all that you saw, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Comment down below what R&B or jazz artist you would like featured on my channel. Lastly, make sure you check out the description box for ways you can keep in touch with me, get access to exclusive perks, and check out the Soprano Notes vlog. I hope you have a good day, and I'll see you soon. Bye!